morning, everyone. I'm honored to be here with you today. And for those of you who may not know us, World Travel and Tourism Council, or WTTC, as we're known as, is a nonprofit membership association that comprises of the 200 largest, most influential travel corporates across the sector, all represented at the CEO level. Our mission is to advocate for the industry, communicate our value, and conduct research, and share best practices for the responsible growth and development of the overall sector. So today we have a collection of great industry leaders and I'm honored to be speaking to you. Um, convened here in one of the globe's most important travel markets. I send an especially warm greeting to our World Travel and Tourism Council members. You carry the torch for India with the best and brightest leaders in the global industry. And a warm greeting to our India Initiative colleagues represented here today. You've brought WTTC closer to this vast market. And we look forward to collaborating together moving forward. All of you here represent a critically important market for the region and globally. I'm happy to share that I first came to India in 1996 and I've been a big admirer of the culture, the people, the lands of India through the years. I've traveled here many times, both personally and professionally, first as American Express, then as CEO of Pata, and today as WTTC. So I've been asked to talk today about WTTC's view to India, share some of our research, and talk about market trends. And I know some of our colleagues earlier have talked about some of those as well. So WTTC is known for its ability to convene and represent the collective strengths spanning what I would call a mega sector. So our economic impact report fully captures the value and the impact we all have as a travel sector, direct, indirect, and induced. Now we were formed 30 years ago by the former president and CEO of American Express, which is my alma mater. I was there 18 years ago. And it was really um, because the US government said, you in travel, we think you're important, but you're so disorganized. Tourism talks to us separately from hospitality, separately from aviation. So WTTC was really meant to bring together the collective voices. And part of that was quantifying our impact. And so for 30 years, we've been doing this economic impact report. So I'm going to share with you some of those, some of those numbers. So I'm going to go forward and talk about you know, looking ahead 10 years. I'm sharing with you first the global numbers. So you see here that um, from the left, we have GDP in the middle, jobs creation and jobs, and then on the right, spend. So sharing with you the, the statistic on the global level, 5% compound annual growth rate. Our industry is going to grow globally, 110 million new jobs. This is the beauty of our industry. We create jobs that bring people out of poverty and we give them viable employment. And then a 6.4% compound annual growth rate in terms of spend and 4.4%. Now compare this to the India numbers. Much more growth. You'll see GDP, 8.4% compound annual growth rate. Jobs creation. 18% of the globe's new jobs over the next 10 years in our industry will happen here in India. That's what we're projecting. And honestly, these numbers were uh, projected nine months ago. With the great exuberant news that we've been all hearing the last day or so, um, I'm, I'm sure that these numbers are going to go even higher. International spend, stronger, and domestic spend as well. Contribution to GDP, it will be restored to the level that it was at in 2019. Proportion of jobs uh, in India to increase. So it's going from 7.7% up to 10.2% of the overall industry. And this one's exciting. And this is even before, you know, I saw the big headlines last week, and in general, they've been happening over the last six months. 
you know, this friendly rivalry that India has with China. You know, we're seeing that Wall Street is more enamored with India right now. So even these projections for the next 10 years are probably understated given the positive news that we've been hearing the last six months. But with growth and opportunity comes responsibility. Now, one big shift that's happened over the last year and a half, I'll say, you know, I spend my time speaking with players across the ecosystem, public, private, um, from SMEs to, to government to development banks. One big shift that I've seen over the last year and a half is that, um, number one, there's, there's limited or little climate change deniability. I think it's, it's the acceptance of this has, has just uh, snowballed over the past year. Number two, governments, ministries across the region. You know, a year and a half ago when I spoke to them, their focus was on let's get the IBAs in. Let's just get the tourists back. It was, now when I talk to every ministry, they, they're so proud to show me this is our sustainability program. This, you know, the, the head of state is telling us this is the number one priority. And yes, we need the dollars coming in, we need the GDP growth, but it's definitely now paired with responsibility. Now, all of us in the industry, we've seen, you know, our favorite destinations. Sometimes they've been impacted more than we'd like. And so we, as leaders of the industry, we have this duality to manage. It comes with a double-edged sword. There are positives and negatives that come with tourism development. And I share this with you. You know, I was in an economic, uh, economist impact um, webinar about a year and a half ago, but this really struck me. My heritage is Filipino. I'm sitting here in India. Look at the statistics. In terms of, you know, affluent consumers, thousands of them who were surveyed across our region, look at the two countries who care the most about conscious travel. India, 97%. Philippines, 98, 99%. And when I looked at these numbers and I compared, okay, who cares a bit less, a bit more? It's the countries like ours that are the most impacted by climate change. And that's why, you know, we need to be stewards of growing our industry, but also taking care of our home assets. This is very important. It's important to the government. It's important to all of you. It's important to the communities that you engage. So WTTC, you know, while we advocate for growth for our corporates, our focus front and center is sustainability. So this is kind of an overview. It's a lot of detail, but I'm here to tell you that we have a very comprehensive program in terms of sustainability. Sustainable aviation fuel. Just two weeks ago, you know, and my, my boss, CEO Julia, she comes from an aviation background. One of the things we feel passionately about is we need to encourage adoption of sustainable aviation fuels. So two weeks ago, I was in ASEAN Tourism Forum and I advocated to the ASEAN group of ministers, please consider the leadership of following the model of the EU in terms of SAF mandates and initiatives to encourage voluntary SAF adoption. So this is one of, the, one of the areas that we need to progress on here in Asia. This is a program I'm proud to say about six months ago I brokered. We have a WTTC Hotel Basics program, which is like the entry level. It helps your properties with just 12 points get a start on sustainability. So that's like level one. And I brokered a partnership with GSTC. GSTC is 42 criteria. So it is more stringent. But now we will have a ladder. We'll have WTTC Basics, WTTC Advanced, which will be about 20 criteria, and then 42 for GSTC. Now you can look on our website. This content, you know, what we do for sustainability in the industry, a lot of it is for free. You can look at our website and find this program. We just want to help the industry move. Now, we also have new groundbreaking research. This is the first time we've been able to deeply quantify the impact of environmental and social from our industry. 
So this is a report that is accessible also on our website, available for free for all of you. And there's some critical metrics. We've done this study across 185 countries. So it's a vast treasure trove of data. The governments are looking at this and create, you know, it's influencing their scorecards because they know that, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a trusted source and it's same metrics, same scorecard looked at across 185 countries. So I'm going to share with you a few key statistics that we look at. So this is greenhouse gas versus GDP. So as we restore and we grow our industry, how much are we super fueling you know, the, the, the greenhouse gases? We're happy to see that there's a decoupling. It's not growing at the same rate. And this is because of all the work that we've done over the last 10 years. Now, this needs to accelerate. And we need to get to the path on the path to net zero. So another benchmark we look at is the share of female workers in the formal sector. Now, when I saw this number for Asia Pacific, it's 37%. I, t I went back to the research team and I said, no, you're wrong. The research that I've seen says we employ 50 to 60% women. And they said, no, Liz, it's the formal sector. It's the salaried jobs. So this was a number that was a bit disappointing to me to see you know, this disparity. And one opportunity, and let's see, social impact travel and tourism in India. I, was a, I think this number is an opportunity. You know, we're at about 12% um, in this market. So to support this growth, you know, I think it's an opportunity to create some you know, gender equity in, in the workplace. The other signal, the other sign of a healthy pipeline in the, the, the sector is how much of you is gender equity as well as youth employment, creating opportunity for youth to enter. So both of these, if you're interested in our research, you can look at this QR code and go straight to our website or just go to wdtc.org. Now I'm going to quickly go through some industry trends. I know some of my colleagues already um, went through some of these. So let me talk to this. Testing, okay. Now, first, sustainability and social responsibility. As you heard me say, destination management is key and priority. The, the national tourism organizations across the region have shifted from just marketing to destination management. So they're going to look holistically at how is our industry contributing, hurting or helping the local communities. So the metrics are changing, the scorecards are changing, so that's really important. Sustainable design practices, diversity, equity, inclusion. Countries across the region are looking at these key metrics for, for, um, for, as benchmarking. Food, travel and tourism. I know this is a, a food-loving travel market. Sustainable sourcing. I think we're actually quite late in Asia Pacific um, taking up this trend. I saw this trend in you know, Western US 20 years ago. Now, some of the four running restaurants are starting to label and show, okay, these are sustainable choices. Wellness dining, mindful drinking. So there are headlines around take up of Ozempic and drugs like that in the US. And there's worry in food companies, there's worry in restaurants. Are people going to be socializing but eating less? Mindful drinking, this is gaining popularity. It's not just dry January. Now, you know, people are selectively, you know, opting to drink sometimes. So what's the trend that we need to adopt to? One would be, let's give them choices so they still come out. You know, I have friends that say, oh, well, I'm losing weight and I'm drinking less, so I'm not gonna go out much this month. Well, you still want them coming into your property. And the idea is like, how do you engage them to spend and visit and socialize if it's not, you know, heavily food and, and alcohol centric. Asian goes more global. I love this trend. New York Times profiled this and they said, Asian ingredients are getting much more awareness around the globe. This is great for us. More people around the globe are going to be appreciating our cuisine. The experience economy, you know, my colleagues talked about this earlier. Um, I've heard the Taylor Swift name like three times today and she's coming to my neighborhood in Singapore in two weeks. So I'm kind of bracing myself for that onslaught. Now, an interesting article I also read in the New York Times this morning, um, it's headline and they said, the new swag, the new must have, 
and I'm going to make some of you shudder, is uh, luxury hotel goods branded. So one person there was actually quoted saying, I have seven bathrobes from, and they named an Indian luxury property. So, um, so this is interesting, and this is a sign of like the experience economy. It shows, okay, it's asp one woman was quoted saying, 70% of the souvenirs I have from hotels, I haven't been there yet, so it's my aspiration. And so she said, over time, you know, now it's shifted to 30%. So she actually used it as like, you know, as kind of a souvenir of an experience that she wants to have. So interesting, I don't know, I think uh, you, you'll all want to make sure you get paid for these uh, souvenirs that people are picking up, right? Immersive, authentic travel, creative travel experiences. So the term creative travel, just to clarify, it means when you can engage a traveler in an experience like actively, cooking, dancing, creating a hobby, research shows that they will post eight, eight to 10 times more if they're actively engaged in that experience. And this is your way of also engaging the community. You know, heritage crafts or, you know, music, dance, something. You know, this is a way to like deeply engage the travelers that are coming through your properties. Community-based tourism, heritage-based tourism, spiritual and religious, we heard that before. I love that word that I saw earlier, precation. I've never heard that before. Ensuring a sense of place and hospitality. How many of you have traveled and then you wake up, you look at your hotel room and you forgot what country you're in? So the more modern trend is really bring a sense of place into your public spaces, into your room, and do it in a refined way that celebrates the craft, the local culture. Blended travel. I think this one's huge for our region. You know, never be, this is your chance to cross out, keep people longer. Um, and so, you know, all the aspects of look, looking at a traveler, and particularly for India, you've got a lot of corporate travelers coming in who might not have opted to come to India in the first place on leisure. This is your chance to win them over, to bring them back, bring them back on, on a lizard trip. Wellness, biohacking retreats. I've seen such technology in different properties around the world. People are taking this to a real extreme science. Asian spirituality and wellness. Some of the things that we've um, adopted and embraced for thousands of years, you know, are now going mainstream. Sound healing, you know, you're seeing it in all, you know, all parts of the globe. Things like, you know, with Ayurveda. Um, so it's like the early stages of when yoga was adopted, and now it's in every country. Soft adventure. So I'm going to fast forward. One of the questions I was asked, how can India attract more international tourism? And I saw the, the concern last week that 97% of the uh, tourism promotion budget was cut. So I did think about this. One, one of the things that we do as WTTC is we... Um, advocate for streamlining visas. And I had an opportunity to do that very specifically about six months ago. I went on a personal trip, I had a group chat going to an India wedding, um, and I saw all of my friends and colleagues struggling with the new e-visa um, portal. So I took that as an opportunity to get very specific feedback. What pain point did you have? How difficult was it? So I handed that to your Secretary of Tourism and they were very happily, happy to take it. So things like that, you know, how can we make it streamlined, less costly, or remove the fee? You know, we want to help with that. Um, two is, and I'll say this, one of, probably one of the biggest barriers I know with India is that colleague, international people, I think the ones that hesitate to come here, they have this image that it's going to be stressful, too chaotic, too difficult. Now, I mentioned I came here in 96. My, I anticipated the same thing. I expected an interesting trip, but challenging, difficult, maybe I'll get sick. Um, what I experienced was fantastic. It was one of the best customer service experiences I've had in my life, and that's been repeated over time. I think you have, globally, some of the best service. I think it's a benchmark for other countries. So I applaud the industry here, because I think you know, the, the best in India is the best in the globe. So how else can you track more? Um, make sure that you magnify, for I mentioned, creative tourism. Make sure that you know, you're engaging people to post in social media. And the last thing I would say, I only entered, I was with American Express for 18 years. I was not part of the association world. 
I entered the association ward three years ago, and I realized, wow, this is where you can create unexpected <coughs> new relationships. Okay, so they're pushing me off, but I'm gonna ask you a final thing. We recently, um, we recently published an AI report. This is also for free on our website. It's a primer, it's an education piece. I'm going to ask you, the future of travel and tourism in AI and robotics. This is where we function as the voice of the industry as WTTC. I want to give all of you a chance to give your voice. If you had the chance to speak to the AI and robotics experts sitting in the Silicon Valley, and you want them to solve some of your biggest problems here in the industry, what would you say to them? So please down, it's a big question. Um, Think big, what major problem or opportunity do you see in our industry? You can answer this now, or the survey is going to be open for one week. And I'm just gonna share one quick story. The first destination leader that I shared this with said, I need some time to think about this. And then he turned to me and he said, his question is, will my culture continue to exist? And I was just blown away. This is a country that has been war ravaged, this is a country that um, is trying to find its sense of cultural identity. And here's a travel leader saying to me, will our country continue to exist, our, our culture? And I was just, you know, this is what travel can do. We can revive a country, we can revive a culture. So I turned that question around and I said, what scenarios would help your culture thrive? That's the question I would ask. And he wants to see, can AI help him with this? Okay? Or them, I should say, the government. So think big, beyond delivering a Coke can or making a bed. What challenge in your destination do you wish could be solved? This is the same QR code. So if you go in there, please give your voice. We'll be your voice. And I would love to hear from you. Please join us. I'm excited to say that our global summit will be relatively nearby in Perth. Um, so that's October 8th through 10th. And this is my contact. Feel free to contact me um, if you'd like to learn more. Thank you so much.